Hello, everyone. Welcome to an action-packed edition of ARG Presents. I'm your boy, your good pal, Amigo Aaron, joined by a man who's having a bad week. I give you the Brent. This all sucked. <laughs> Can you be a little more positive, please? I'm positive. This all sucked. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. So... If you missed last week's, a sad miss, by the way, you need to go check that out. But we spun the wheel, and we made the absolutely awe-inspiring deal. As this week, we will be playing games on the marvelous, the beloved, the underutilized CDTV. The Commodore CDTV. Brent, what do you know about this magnificent little piece of equipment? It looks like a VCR. And, uh, <laughs> well, that was the whole point of the CDTV, Brent. Commodore decided to get into this to a uh, category of media of media players that really sort of never took off the old entertainment center computer thing. Uh, this was their attempt. Really, if you look at these uh, CD TVs, and actually I have had the chance to look at one. I've never actually got to play with one. Uh, they are they look like my old console CD player from back in the day. Just a big like black shiny looking console type thing that you would set in your stick with your stereo stuff and it would look great uh it was uh an interesting idea uh from commodore who effectively uh took their uh beloved amiga 500 series and and basically converted it into this console and when i say console i mean like a your uh your tv console type area uh this is a this is a nice unit it looked nice but unfortunately, this was Commodore, and so you know there was some ham and egging going on, Brent, uh, <laughs> and when, when it came to the execution. It's funny because by this time, they, they were getting pulled out in the carpet. And I'll, I'll read some of the reviews on, I found on, on this thing, and it, they were not kind. But let's, have a, let's have a quick look at the CD. Now, I, I should ask before we get going here, had you, had you ever, you've heard of the CDTV, I assume? Absolutely. And had, but you've, I, I've never... I've never loaded a single game on it yeah. until this week. Yeah. And, and I wish I could rewind time. If you could. I wouldn't kill Hitler. <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't save a bunch of orphans from a burning building. I would never let this wheel piece exist. Oh my gosh. What a what a <laughs> You're really <laughs> No, you really weren't a fan, is what you're saying. So <laughs> uh. let's see what we got here. Uh you've got of course again the C D T V uh, release date on this bad boy, March of 91. So this was early in the game. March of 91. This came out, the introductory cost on this bad boy in the USA, Brent. Uh, 999 buckery dues, US dollars. Wow. What, do you, what do you think of that price? Uh, anyone, anyone who paid $1,000 for this system... I may God have mercy on your soul. Well, don't don't worry, not too many did. Um, <laughs> by the way, in case you're wondering, uh, that that's around uh, nineteen hundred dollars uh, in 2020 as we record this. So uh, a pre a hefty sum for this, but this was advanced technology, and you always you had to pay. Uh, looking at some unit, Wiki had some unit numbers sold on this. They didn't have any in the U.S., but they did uh, have numbers in Germany and the U.K. And according to them, they sold about just about 26,000 uh, of these in Germany, and they sold about almost thirty thousand of these in the UK. So they did okay, you know. I mean, that's not that's not great. Let's face facts, but it, it could be it could be worse. So what do you get here in the old CDTV in this sleek black uh, case, looking all looking real pretty? I mean, it's a good looking fleeced. unit. Fleeced. That's what you get. You get fleeced. Oh, listen to you. I said sleek, not fleeced. So. What you've got in here, I mean, like I said, effectively is a is a uh, Amiga 500, the old Motorola exactly. 68K running at the old 7.14 megahertz, uh, a mega memory, and you got yourself a 1X CD-ROM, Brent, which was the uh, CD-ROM of the day. Right, that was the style at the time. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you also got a a little remote control that came with it. Uh, when this thing shipped originally, it didn't have a keyboard. Uh, I mean, it had one, but you had to pay. Everything was an add-on. You know how that goes. You got, you got, you got to pay. But it did have the. I mean, it had pretty much the capabilities 
of an Amiga 500. I mean, they kept everything in there. It's got uh, a floppy drive port, MIDI stuff. It's got, you know, it's got the joystick ports, the same audio stuff, the RF. You know, all the stuff you would have expected. Uh, oddly, this thing shipped with Amiga OS uh, Kickstart 1.3, which, uh, as I recall, uh, th- I think 2.1 had been came out by then. So it's odd that they would have shipped it with that. Uh, again, you did have the uh, infrared remote slash uh, game controller, and I say that in, a, in its loosest sense because if you very saw, loose sense, if you yes. saw this thing, you would you would uh, question its ability to control games. So, um, why did they release this? Well, this was actually a competitive marketplace. Okay, uh, back in the day, you got to consider again. This was I know you're a little young for this, Brent, but for I remember this distinctly, and, and there was a race. The computer companies were racing to get systems into the living room, you know. So get this little list here uh, that they've got. So uh, competing with the CDTV, you had the, and we've covered this before, the Philips CDI was in the picture. Remember the Philips CDI? That was another console thing. You had Pioneer's Laser Interactive. Here's what I'd forgotten about. I'd totally forgotten about this until I read it on here. The Tandy Video Information System. Which was a that's that's a whole other thing right there, uh, and then you had uh, the 3DO would eventually get to that mark. So you had a lot of stuff that were crowding into that arena to try to capture your living room attentions uh, back in the day. Uh, none really caught on. I mean, we don't even stuff like uh, remember uh, Microsoft had the like uh, what was it uh, Web TV or whatever. There was a bunch of these little consoles that were sort of like computers. They were trying to do the same thing. And for whatever reason, in this at least in this country, that never really was a thing. It's it's very strange. It was strange. too early. Yeah, it was too early for that technology. Well, it none of it was um, effective and user friendly enough to really capture a market. It, That's yeah. my opinion. Uh, the CDTV <laughs> was announced at the 1990 uh, Consumer Electronics Show. It's funny because even in 1990, the press were on the Commodore. <laughs> Like there's a quote here on the uh, on the wiki. It says that uh, Computer Gaming World 1990 stated that Commodore had a poor reputation among consumers and developers, citing abysmal record of customer and technical support in the past. So, <laughs> not good. They also <laughs> mentioned that's exact when you just when you put your new system on display. That's what you want to hear. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. They also go on to mention. That uh, uh, oh, and this gets mentioned a lot. If you're an Amiga owner uh, in that time, you had heard about a, a peripheral coming that was coming out, which was effectively going to be a CD uh, player for your Amiga 500. I think it was called the, it was the A520. I believe is what it was called. And uh, this thing would ha- basically slip onto the expansion port of your Amiga 500 and provide you uh, CD compatibility. Well, <clears throat> a lot of people were like. A lot of uh, people that you would have that Commodore would have depended on to to buy this system, were that were current Amiga owners are like, yeah, I'll just wait for that, <laughs> and and then, good move by the way, <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because that sure enough, uh, it would play the CD TV stuff. Plus, you had your computer there. Now, eventually, like I said, uh, Commodore had planned this thing to just be sort of something you'd sit there with your remote control and and play with, you know. But they actually released a ton of peripherals for it, uh, and that would you know that, that would make life easier. Like I said, you, if you're watching the video, you can see in the picture they've got a floppy drive, they've got a a, a keyboard, they've got a mouse, you know, stuff like that, uh, stuff to make it pretty much a full fledged computer. Uh, these things go for a pretty penny today, Brent. Uh, they're actually pretty sought after as uh, collectors' items. Uh, you know, because they they are an attractive thing, and they are a functional computer if you get all if you cobble together all the stuff. But at the time when it came out, uh, it did not do well. Uh, Just out of curiosity, Aaron, yeah. do you know what an Amiga five hundred would have sold for in this time era? In the nineties, it would have been substantially less than a thousand dollars. I could in the yeah, in, I'm the, I'm thinking almost in, half, right? Over half. It, 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 well, of course, you didn't get a CD ROM. That's the thing, but. Okay, we'll talk about that. Well, let, I'm going to try to put this. In, it's so. Here's the thing, and you're not you were you're not a, a young pup, so you might remember some of this. 
CD-ROM technology was sort of the golden chalice of computing at the time. Like, that was going to be, especially when you're sitting back and you see the PC has started to get these things, and you're like, oh, man, here it comes. It's the CD-ROM, man. It's going to open up the doors. And so that was something that was really a, a buzzword. You had to have one. And so Commodore... Uh, thought they could ride that sort of uh, technology right on the back of it and, and, and put together something for the living room. Again, this was not a bad idea. It just, it's just a market that just never developed, you know, and so... Well, plus it was poorly executed. Not not the hardware part of it, but there was there was nothing that took advantage of the technology. It's funny, I was... <laughs> Wiki quotes Nolan Bushnell, of all people. I guess he was one of the guys that was back in the CDTV... But he 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 didn't like the price of it. The price was a continual sticking point, by the way. And he said, and he quote was quoted as saying, "It's very difficult to sell significant numbers of anything more than five hundred dollars." And he said, if they could have brought it in for under eight hundred, he could have sold these things to the cows come home. If you, I will say at the time, because I was into the Amiga stuff uh, by then, uh, you could watch the CD TVs rise and fall, and it was a quick rise and fall, by the way. And, and but I mean, at first it was sort of exciting. I mean, I, in my opinion, I, th- I thought it was kind of neat, and it would, it looked pretty cool. But the, you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, I like this Computer Gaming World quoted again in '94. So this is a couple years after the release. They've called they're describing the CD TV as a fiasco. <laughs> so not good. Eventually, they 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 released a second CD TV, like a second revision that was better. But by that time, Katie barred the door. They were out. They were out of here. You know, they were the, the whole market had fallen apart on the CD TV. So, the CD TV, an interesting unit. I should mention before we move on, get the listen to these peripherals. I didn't even hear some of the stuff. Of course, you've got the wireless, the infrared mouse. You know how much fun those things are. If you ever use infrared, Ex- yep. <laughs> you got here's another one: the wireless trackball. Another that also would have been amusing. <laughs> Uh, you've got the, uh, here's some I didn't know, the SCSI controller for it. That's kind of neat. And I assume these are all specifically made for the CDTV. Uh, they released hard drives. we got memory cards. I didn't know about that either. Gen locks. That's bizarre. I wouldn't have guessed that either. <laughs> so, <laughs> some odd peripherals. But this is the Amiga, the mother of odd peripherals. <laughs> this, is, this is this system. So, pr- pretty cool. Now, they also released games for this thing, uh, Brent. Uh, <laughs> well, now they released they released discs in packaging. I will admit that. Games might be a toss-up. Well, the thing about it is, again, these were CD games, man. So you know they're gold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, the CD... Let's, not, let's talk about just CD systems in general, okay? All right. When, when, you, when <clears throat> CD technology first arrived in the PC world... You really had a couple different types of software, right? You had games that had a lot of full motion video and and and, and red book audio, right? That really yeah. they may not have been the best games, but they did take advantage of the ability for this thing to render video, not this this, but other CD consoles. And, Certainly, and then yes. you had games <clears throat> that were basically games for whatever computer was around that they just sort of put on a disc. And the disc would take would be like uh, 750 megs, and the game on the disc would be like a meg or four megs or five megs. And occasionally they yes. would put in some kind of intro or something. You know, this ha- this plagued the uh, the uh, follow up to the C- CD TV, which is the CD32. Which, by the way, the CD32 is leagues better a better a machine yes. than this. And it but I mean, sucks. of course, you're talking it's way further down the line. But I think we have. I think with our choices today, inadvertently, I might add, that we have taken both these types of games and 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 given them a try. Uh, so, <laughs> for for better for worse, that's for sure. So, I'm going to lead. We definitely the cho- experienced both type of yeah. games. Yes, I'm going to lead the, the bad and the really bad today on this thing. <clears throat> I I told you, Brent, I wanted to play a game that I owned for the CD TV, and I own. One game for the CD TV. I believe this game came to me uh, by from our good friend Ravi Abbott, who uh, is one of the uh, co-hosts over at the Retro Hour 
uh, show. Great show, by the way, if you haven't ca caught that. And Robbie's been a supporter of the Amigos for a long time. Real great guy. Also a pretty darn good DJ. But with all the good things he's done, he's he's pretty much ruined that by because I played the game he sent me among the other games. I'm gonna go on. Uh, I'm gonna blow myself up here as so I'll hold up the game. There it is, folks. It's Psycho Killer. Psycho Killer. Now, the reason I'm showing this game right now is because I just to give you a summary of what a, a CD TV game looks like. There's what it looks like. Now, I'm gonna open this up and. The front of this looks like that Brent pr printed it. I mean, it is so cheap. And I thought to myself... <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I thought to myself, look how cheap this is. The inside of it's it's empty, you can see. Uh, and it's flimsy as heck. And this is it. Even the instructions are on the back. And then here's what the disc looks like uh, for it. And you can see, also cheap. So, I thought to myself, maybe my copy is just a cheap piece of crap. Well... This company made another game for the CDTV. I actually got a re-release of the CD32 that I actually also have. And this one has got a rep. This one's called The Town With No Name. All right, you can see this one. This particular disc is labeled for the CD32, although this is sort of a standout title with the CDTV. And this one has an even cheaper uh, f uh, f cover on it, and the disc is the same cheapo game. So... Uh, these they didn't exactly spare all expense uh, on these on these games, but by God, we're gonna cover them anyway, Brent. So again, I'll be covering this week Psycho Killer, the only game I have. So I had heard of the uh, of Psycho Killer vaguely, just I I don't know why, but I'd heard of it, but I never played it because this isn't my type of game, you know. But I didn't. Well, no, I know it's not. So let's talk about it. This came out in 92, so just is right around the time of the release. <clears throat> this also got, believe it or not, this got a 93 DOS port. That was stunning to me that this would be ported. Uh, of course, the original price on this bad boy was uh, 30 pounds. So it was uh, it was a, oh, well, I mean, that was probably oh, by wow. that time, that was probably not, <laughs> not unusual. Developed by an outfit called uh, Delta 4 Interactive, right? Delta 4 Interactive is the Ed Wood of the CDTV or or, or a video <laughs> game in general. I mean, which we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, this was designed by a fellow named Sean Coppins. He used to be held account accountable for this fiasco. And the producer, Michael Hodge, Hodges, he produced this and The Town With No Name, which are two of the titles that I've now found out are two of the most hideous titles ever released. <laughs> <laughs> the town with no name, which we uh, I've seen covered, is just horrible. This and this is a different sort of bad. Uh, this has a cast, so you know you're in trouble when that comes out. Uh, again, this is a I would call this a uh, quick time event game. Let's go with that uh, in the in the vein of a of a street of a, of a street fighter. I wish in the vein of a dragon's wow. lair uh, or something like that. So. Ooh. Yeah. What is Psycho Killer, Brent? I know you're asking. Well, Psycho Killer uh, puts you in the role of a, a dude who comes across a car that has been left in the middle of the road. Now, if you play this game, right away you know you're in for it because it comes up with a with two choices. You can do a tutorial or you can play the game. The tutorial just literally is the most basic elements of using a mouse or a cursor. And, 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 and clicking on stuff. And you in the opening of this game, you watch a woman. She leaves her house. Right? She locks her door. And this is, by the way, this is straight from the uh, Mystery Science Theater level filming. You get to see her start her car. You get to see her drive away in the car. You know, she's driving in the car. It's not riveting. Uh, you're watching this, and I'm assuming the CDTV could do better than what we're seeing here. Because this, to call this uh, film footage or... To call what you're seeing, uh, 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 you know, a movie would be uh, no. Nah. It's more like a, a very fast series of stills, you know, with a great. Let's put it this way: the 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 uh, Mega Drive CD player is laughing at the CD TV when this thing comes on. This thing is <laughs> this is this is this is Sega CD levels of crap when it comes on. It's ugly, grainy footage. 
But anyway, you watch a woman in the opening. She comes to the she comes to a point in the road where a guy walks out in front of the road, kind of puts his hands out, like stop. So she stops, and she gets out of her car, and the guy sort of walks over to the woods, and, and says, "Come here." <laughs> and she and she does because who wouldn't follow a stranger that blocked well, the road? You're missing one key point. One key point about the about this yeah. scene. The 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 psycho killer is on one side of a fence. Yeah. He's completely transferred onto one side right. of the fence. The woman is still on her side of right. the fence with her car. Okay? Yes. The psycho killer pulls out the yeah. knife, right? Yeah. So she knows this is trouble. Yeah. But he still manages to get her. <laughs> yeah. She just assumes he could jump the fence, leap the ravine, and get to her before she could slip into her car and drive away. A stupid assumption. So, but... Well, she does try to get in her car. She does. But she... It's the old, I can't figure out how my keys work routine. Yeah. This was, this was the good, this, the, you know, this girl probably deserves to be psycho killed because, <laughs> because of the way she acts. So anyway, this is all the opening cutscene. You're not involved. Okay. So eventually the psycho killer takes this chick into like a, a you know, like a pasture, basically. It's what it looks like. So then here comes the hero, the guy you play, comes rolling up in his car. Now... Uh, there's some like inner mo- monologue through this. The, everyone in this sounds British, so I'm gonna hold that oh, country accountable. British. But yeah. you never know. Uh, he comes up on this car, and this is where the game starts. Okay, now luckily I had read about this part here because I don't think I'd ever would have figured it out otherwise. So you've done nothing for like four or five minutes, uh, and then all of a sudden. The, your guy's driving, and he comes up on this car in the road. And that's when the game starts. You've got to hit your brake. And so it shows a picture of the guy's feet on the pedals. And you've got to know enough to click on the brake. That's And if you don't, you careen into the other car, and there's a huge nuclear explosion that kills yeah. you instantly. <laughs> I guarantee you that's where all the budget went. Yeah. I guarantee you that they didn't cause that explosion. I guarantee you that's... That's 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 some free footage they found somewhere. That, there's no way they paid for that. So that's your introduction to this game. So <clears throat> what are the gameplay elements of this? Well, you you are presented. I know. I'm. <laughs> there are gameplay elements. Brit shaking his head. You you're presented arrows on the screen that will allow you. I guess let's pretend there's a level of freedom here. And when you click them, it will load up the next scene or or pastoral setting. Okay, Uh, your goal in this, according to the inner monologue of your guy, is to rescue this woman from this psycho killer. Okay, that's the goal. The psycho killer, we should mention, he looks like he walked out of like a a TV uh, repair store or 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 a coffee shop. He's just a, a he's just a '90s looking dude with spiky hair. He just who doesn't look the least bit scary or intimidating in any way. He just looks like some yeah. slub, doesn't he? Both of us could fill the role of psycho killer and be far more convincing than this this clean cut, like just wearing a jacket yeah. dude. This guy, I mean, I, let's face facts. Probably most psycho killers look like this guy, but I mean, when you're playing a game, you don't want to see this guy, just some dude in a jacket. You know, are, that's it. That's all you get. You know, come on. So you follow this guy down. And through the woods, right? And the first wacky action scene you see, is, and this is a great scene, I have to say. It's one of my favorites. You're walking across the, a bridge, and the psycho killer goes like, bleh, he, out from under the bridge. And if you time it right, you can, if you click on the guy's face, your character goes, eat, he says, eat my converse, or something like that, Reebok. Eat my Reebok. Eat my Reebok. It kicks the psycho killer in the face. <laughs> Like a geek, I mean, this looks like the, this is a this psycho killer is not scary, and he gets kicked right in no. the face, and he drops his psycho killer weapon, right, which is a machete, and, which is also amazing because he doesn't drop it in the ravine <laughs> under the bridge where he was at. He somehow drops it onto the 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 uh, upper part of the river bank. Yeah. <laughs> so, which and then you can click on it, and pick it up, but you need to do that. So this is. This is the way this game sort of goes. 
you 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 trudge most of the game i swear to you is walking through a park or the woods i mean that's most of the game it's just walking around and looking at still shots of trees now one thing i wanted to discuss because i'd read this a lot and so i wanted to experience it firsthand i played this uh i, I played this title this particular title on the on my pc okay because I, I actually use the disc and so i actually played this at real time you know disc settings okay yeah real loud and loads. boy the, you talk about uh, no bang for your buck this thing is slow as christmas i mean it's a 1x cd rom so they can only go so fast but you are forever loading these scenes and this sort of i'll tell you this reminds you of what it's like to have the promise of cd technology there was a cost and the cost was to to load a lot of information quickly, you had to have a, it had to be a halfway decent PC basically or or computer to to deal with it. And I'm not sure that that this Amiga 500 was up to the task of running this sort of game. I mean, it's close, it's borderline. Uh, at least the way this th that was done in this particular instance, it was rough. And I can't imagine setting through this, waiting for this game to load. Now, I should ask you, Brett, you've been quiet for a while. What were your initial thoughts? On Psycho Killer. So I went into this 100% blind. Yeah. Loaded the game up, played through the tutorial. By what? the way, the tutorial prepares you for a much different game. Yeah. I mean, the, the the controls and everything are the same, but the, the tutorial is like, yeah, you can pick up objects by clicking on them. I was like, okay. It's like you can move around. I was like, okay. And, and it has you like pick up a coffee mug and, and uh, uh, interact. So I thought, okay, this is going to be a game. I'm going to find things in the in a uh, in the world, pick them up, build an inventory system, blah blah blah. So I start the game proper. I see the girl drive. I see her foolishly get kidnapped, and then the uh, the break scene happens, and I, I I still think I'm in a cut scene, and I blow up, and I'm like. Okay, it's going to be one of those. And it, immediately my mood soured. So I fire it back up. Thankfully, you can click through the intro. Even you, No matter what, when you restart, you're in for about uh, 90 seconds of footage you can't skip. But the long intro sequence, you can skip. So I hit my brakes. I got out of the car. And then I immediately got lost in the forest. And the uh, there is no rhyme or reason to what's going on. There is no. I thought, okay, I got to get in the trunk. I got to. I, I was giving this game way too much credit. So I eventually said, okay, this game wants me to just go after the killer. That's what I'm going to do. I went after the killer. I made it through seventy five percent of the game without dying at that point. And I thought, how long is this game? You can beat this game in nine minutes and 50 seconds. And that's with the load times. Actual interacting with the game, this is a six-minute game. Six minutes. That's it. Did you beat this, Aaron? I did not. I, did. I will say okay. I went through and I watched the ending because I had to. I've... I beat it both ways because there's a secret ending that you, I, I looked, I watched tons of footage to see if anyone else had found this and I could not find where anyone else I had done it. I haven't seen it. What's the secret ending? So you, you come up to the, the wreck, you stop the car, yeah. right? Yeah, just leave. Just start your car back up and leave. You actually, you your guy's like, well, this was crazy. He turns his car around, and the uh, a spitting newspaper comes up and it's like, "Yeah, psycho killer kills five, like still in the loose." And your guy's like, "Man, I wonder if I could have done anything to stop that." Game over. <laughs> <laughs> so that but you was don't by die. <laughs> far. Yeah, that was by far the best part of the game. Uh, th this is often compared to uh, A Town With No Name, which is the same kind of garbage play, but instead of live action, they use an animated footage. And 
that game is so bad that it's good because it's got these silly, way over the top. It's got priests that just kind of fly off the screen. It looks like we drew it also. Oh, yeah. It's horrible. It's a crap game, but it's campy. This is not campy. This is just so bad that it's bad. There is no redeeming quality. The video footage is absolute trash. And I'm not... I'm not saying, oh, you know, like all the all these games at this time were trash because they were. This takes trash to an exciting new level. Uh, they tried to to go basically full screen with their video, and there's a reason why uh, all the other systems have you watching video in a little box. It's because when you do that, you can actually tell what the footage is. <laughs> they have so much pixelation. And so much uh, uh, poor lighting and filters on this garbage that it is trash. No. Trash. It has zero redeeming qualities outside of being able to just leave the game as soon as you start. That's the only thing that didn't suck about this game. Garbage, this is an embarrassment. An embarrassment to game. You know, I'm not going to bury this. And I'll tell you why. Well, then you're well, wrong. Me, and I hate let you me, now. Let me explain. You know, back about uh, 30 years ago, God, let's say thir- thir- 25 years ago, me and my buddies got together to shoot our own like horror comedy movie. You'll remember this. It was called I Vladkula. It. And, it was, and we got together with our VCR uh, recorders. And after work... At 4 a.m., we'd go to my backyard or out in the graveyard somewhere and record footage for this thing. Which And the footage, I will say, I, I do watch occasionally and, and am much amused. Uh, and so, this looks like someone took the, a similar a, approach and said, let's make a game on this new format. you got to remember, this is a time when this sort of thing was still being established. Uh, and they... They tried to... It was like if me and my buddies got together to make a CDTV game. That's what it reminds me of. Now, it's, I'm not saying it's a good game. Don't get me wrong, because it's not. Or the And I'm not saying the footage is good. I'm not saying it even took advantage of the CDTV's technology. But I do like the idea of just some dudes getting together and to make a cool game. <clears throat> if you look at the uh, credits for this, they even give credit to the guy who like lent them the digitizer and stuff. So... I, this was not a big corporate venture. This was, I'm sure this was just some guys on on a practically no budget that put that did that did the that did the deed. So it to me that's sort of funny. Also, this, Are you done? this game is also so bad it's good in a lot of ways. No, it's yeah, not. Yeah. No. Because it's not. I mean it, No, if you believe that you're an no, hold idiot. On, hold on. Hold on, hold on. When I say that, I mean it's horrible. It's horrible. Don't play it. No. But definitely go watch the footage of it, because the footage is so stupid that it's hilarious. Every part no, of it. No, it's not. No. No. This is not campy. This is not, oh, they all oh, look, they tried real hard. No, this is garbage. <laughs> this is garbage. And to think that they charged people 30 pounds, which is like 40 American dollars, for this trash is an embarrassment to gaming. Well, uh, it's not good. No, no, no. You cannot support this garbage. Uh, <laughs> it is wrong. It is an absolute ripoff. Well, it's I, I admit it's not it's not good. It's not. If they would have if this would have been a uh put it in like you know how magazines used to package in games with this kind if it would have been something like that fine but you cannot have an 11 minute game that has so few redeeming qualities that people are expected to pay money for because you cannot do that that is a a crime against the consumer this fills the role of the of the cautionary tale of the CDTV that's what it's here for you paid your 30 pounds Here's your 10 minutes of footage, sucker. Be more careful. That's what it's saying. No. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, we didn't get any Discord reviews on this, but I did find some actual reviews for this. Uh, 
the people over at Lemon Amiga, which is my go-to site for giving fair, firm ratings, and Lemon's known to be pretty uh, liberal with their ratings, they give Psycho Killer a 1.67 out of 10. This is the lowest thing I, I think, think I've ever seen. I think that's generous. That's generous. Yeah. Uh, Amiga Format reviewed this in its uh, March 92 edition and gave this 13%. Not good. That's way too high. Now, Amiga Joker... Let's talk about Amiga Joker, because I looked at this review. Amiga Joker gave this uh, 3 out of 5 and said this was the leading uh, game on this format. So they liked it more than no, they, but that's I mean one line made a be- another game because even though Town with No Name is equally trash, it's the basically the same game. At least it has humor. At least it has some competence in writing. Uh, this was just garbage. Garbage. All, uh, uh, Amiga Magazine, a pretty reputable magazine. They didn't score this, which that's why I didn't see the score. But according to Wiki, they were they spoke about this game positively, uh, and they spoke about its forgiving reaction time, which whatever that is. But they did say that they couldn't see the cursor on some scenes, which is true. So uh, I'm guessing you're going to give this the big thumbs down, Brent. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah, this this is not worth emulating. This is not worth even <clears throat> looking up on YouTube to watch the entire thing. Um. Because the only thing that's that would it has any redeeming quality is the is the hidden ending, and uh, uh, it's not even that good. I want to so. talk about Delta Four, uh, the uh, outfit that made this. Uh, they were because I looked into them. They were founded in eighty five, and they were around uh, until ninety eight. Complete or not, uh, they designed. They did. They really were around until like ninety two. So it's ninety eight a little bit much, but they that's when they finally were officially labeled as defunct, and it was formed just like I figured. It was performed by a fellow named Fergus McNeil and his some of his buddies. They were at school, and so they started with a text game and moved their way up. They actually had a critical success in a game called Board of the Rings, which I do remember, sort of a parody game. Uh, I do recall that one. So they actually had some successes. I'm looking over the list of what they did. And by the way, Psycho Killer was their last release, according to this. So, there you go. I I hope they felt so much shame that they changed careers. And and just for those that care, uh, this was filmed in the suburbs of London. So, you... (laughs) And the car... There were two cars in this. They were called... They were Vauxhall Chevettes, if that's your cup of tea. So, there's your trivia for the day. So, Psycho Killer... A joyous romp, a fun-filled, interactive romp into the mind of a psycho killer. Check it out, won't you? Now, let's move along, Brent, since you enjoyed that one so much. What do you have for us this week? Because I know, granted, I may have picked a dud, but you've got a habit of finding these hidden gems. You've got a habit of finding these top-shelf games on these uh, lower-tier systems. I know you're going to save our bacon this week with what you've got in store. Tell the fine folks what you've picked out to play, Brent. The game I picked might actually be worse. <laughs> it, it, it's 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 really on the line. I picked Ultimate Basketball. and Ultimate Basketball, get... you say? It's not regular basketball. No, no. Well, <laughs> you're right. It's not regular basketball. <laughs> uh do not confuse this by the NES game like I yeah, did. Yeah, me too. Uh, which is also Ultimate Basketball, but is not in the same in any way except for its name. Um, this was published by Contact Systems in 1991. And, oh boy, this was rough. <laughs> so, uh, what got my... Uh, eye on this game was I was looking up CDTV games and I was looking for ones that had pretty high reviews because I wanted to play something good. Me too. And uh, I found a site that gave this, it was like seven reviews and it had like 4.5 stars. I was like, bam, that's my game. You know, I haven't done a sports game for a while. I'm in. Out of 20. Well, 
<laughs> after I picked it, no, no. After I picked it, I found out that the the even though I was in the CDTV section, when I clicked on Ultimate Basketball, it took me to the Nest game, and that's actually what got the reviews. So Ultimate Basketball is five on five basketball, uh, where the screen moves left and right. You uh, splits at the half court. Once you transfer over, it transfers over. Well, it scrolls over. Um, and it is bad. It is bad in every regard. These, the ultimate part of ultimate basketball is it allows you to coach your team. And you can, you can say like, yeah, I want to put, uh, on full court press, or I want to do a zone. Uh, I want to try to eat the clock. I want to, uh, foul intentionally because, you know, you're trying to get the ball back. And all of that is okay that kind of stuff is pretty good um if you just want to coach your team and 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 not play the action you can do that or you can just play the action and have the computer coach the team you can do that or you could do both you can have the computer do both or and just sit back and watch the game or you can control both so i mean that sounds pretty interesting right it's got a halftime show where cheerleaders come out and do the slur routine. Yes, this uh, is your main event. <clears throat> it, it the cheerleaders are of incredible uh, athletic ability, leaping from the half court to the foul line, up on top of pyramids, doing flips. They occasionally will mess up, so you know it looks a little more realistic or get out of the system right here. Um, they're well animated. It's kind of fun to watch a couple times. It's the same routine over and over, uh, but it's well animated. The music's horrible yeah. during this section. It's just a drum beat. It's really yeah. bad. But this is by far, without exaggeration, the best part of the game is watching the cheerleaders do their little routine. So what makes the game so bad? Because it just sounds like a, a standard basketball game. Well, apparently... Because it doesn't have a license. It's not, you know, doesn't have NBA teams or anything like that. Uh, it has just city names, right? So, I'm almost positive you're not trying to play on a pro circuit. Um, in fact, I don't think you're playing on a college circuit. You're controlling peewee football because Basketball. these flipping people can't make a darn shot. Holy crap, you miss 90% of the things you shoot. And I'm not talking about just the player playing badly. I'm talking about the computer, too. You will have a guy. I had a guy, clean breakaway. He was <clears throat> he was at the rim before anyone else even crossed half court. And he missed three slam dunks in a row. <laughs> <laughs> three slam dunks in a row he missed he bricked them so i was like okay i must be have a setting wrong you know maybe i'm screwing stuff up i'm just gonna let the computer play itself and, and let's see where we got now i was playing short quarters right uh because i wanted the game to be over with but this final score of the computer playing the computer the best of the best i had everything cranked to the nines was four to two after a full game of basketball because they the shots are just absolutely impossible to hit. On top of that, the rules are flipping off the charts. Everything is a foul. Everything. If you breathe just a little bit wrong, it counts it as a foul and you go to the foul line where you miss your foul shots, and then game <laughs> continues. I had the computer, the one time they did score a basket, step out of bounds, the whistle blew for out of bounds, the guy still, he ran back into the court, shot, scored, it counted it, and then they got to take the ball out uh, from out of bounds, or I got to take the ball out of bounds. So it was just like, oh, out of bounds, don't worry about it. We'll go ahead and count the shot. They're so rare nowadays. <laughs> uh, what's something else? You can slam the ball 
and break the backboard, right? Yeah, that's cool. If you do so, you get a technical foul, the basket doesn't count, and the other guy gets to miss his free throw shots. It's maddening. The game plays like you are, are in some kind of jello environment. It takes so long for your guy to start running up to speed. And they there's exhaustion in the game, right? 13 seconds in, okay? Uh, something happened, there was a foul or something. 13 seconds into the game, my team was at 25% exhaustion, which meant they went through 75% of their energy in 13 <laughs> seconds. And when your guys get tired, they don't jump as high, they don't run as fast. Ah! This was just a miserable experience. At least with Psycho Killer, I got to find a hidden ending. The only hidden ending I found in this game is if you can somehow manage to score, you can actually just quit the game and then you'll win. <laughs> if you're winning when you when you exit a game, you win. Like, uh, uh, go ahead, Aaron. Give your opinions on the game. This game is the answer to the question, can we build a game around a halftime show? And the answer is yes, you can. <laughs> The, the cheerleader halftime show, the best cheerleader show I've ever seen in any game. I, I will say the music, it looks like, you remember when you used to go to the mall and it had those Casios or realistic or whatever synthesizers sitting out in front of the, and you could like, kind of whack the buttons and make it do yes. That's what it sounds the like they did. Beat, yeah. The music in yeah. this is random, just random notes. <laughs> I had to make sure that I wasn't having a problem with like with what was going on, so I had to go watch a video. Nope, that's the music. It wasn't just me. It's just random <laughs> tunes. All the music in this is god awful. So let's let's just start yeah. there. This opens with kind of a neat scene, like where you're like out in front of the bask of the of the arena on the street. And that actually changes from day to night. It yeah. also will display the score up on the on the thing. Uh, and then yep. you go into the arena, and I will say, the first problem I had was just trying to figure out the, all the options, because there are these weird pictures. And I don't... I, Horrible menu system. The menu system. system is bizarre. <clears throat> the choices are limited as to what you can to what you can do. And then, you, of course, you pick your teams. But, I, I, the, yeah, the menu sucked. And then you get into the game, and there are a lot of coaching options. I mean, a lot. Now, what do yep. they do? I'm not 100% I'm not sure. I'm not a huge fan. I don't think they fan. actually changed the game at all. Um, the gameplay itself, once I could actually control my character, I it was not easy to understand what to do. You know, I let's face facts. Let me rewind here. TV Sports Basketball is the by far the best basketball game on the Amiga. I mean, by a long shot. Yeah. There's not really anything in, this, in yeah. the same stratosphere. Okay. I don't know how, when that came out in uh, as, as opposed to this, but they, you had the basis for something. You also had Ma Magic Johnson's fast break, some other stuff that were a, a lot more like a list game are with a side view. I don't think this game's as bad as you say it is. I mean, it's not good. Let's, let's it's it's not. No, you can play it, but you can't pay any attention to while you're playing it. And you're okay. I rolled around a basketball court with my highlighted guy. Attempting to do things. I did sink shots occasionally. You're right. Sinking everything is hard. The slam dunk should be a slam dunk. It's still, it always <laughs> bricks. I've bricked slam dunks over and over you know, on this game. Uh, and it's the darndest thing. How, sometimes you can brick them and they'll just bounce in anyway. One thing I do like, on certain angles of the game, you see signs out in the crowd. And it had my favorite sign. Some fan took the time to put up a sign that said, it just said, you know, on a big banner, it said, Indoor Sports. That's all it said. Yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> Indoor Sports? That gets a sign? I couldn't believe I saw that. Uh, the uh, the ref gets involved a lot, and every time the ref, I mean, for everything. And so what happens is the screen scrolls up, and then it, it, the ref goes like, oh, "Is it a pose? You know, like strike a pose." And it, even even it's not it's not like the ref's overly used, but he since he seems so much, it completely stops gameplay. So the screen can roll yes. up the ref. Something else that the rendered cheerleader sequence 
it makes one wonder why they just didn't film some cheerleaders and then put the video on the disc. It would have been just as easy. Maybe they should have just filmed the basketball game, too, while they were at it. Put that on there. <laughs> yes. I looked when I, I downloaded this game off the Tosec. This is a CD TV game. It took it was like four point three two meg. <laughs> so yeah, it is tiny. There's, a tiny game. There's a few other things I want to mention real quick before I forget. Uh, to shoot, you have to hold the button down and then let go, and you can hold the button infinitely long. And and when you let go, it shoots. And to pass, you tap. Yeah. But you can pass it to someone. And just throw the ball from one end of the court yeah, to the other yeah. end of the court, and no one make any attempt yeah. to get the ball. They'll just watch it sail. That had to be all the time. At, on a throw in, if you're if you hit the button to pass to you, and you're on the other side of the court, it just your guy just rifles the ball across the court. <laughs> if you're the coach of this team, you'd murder this guy. What are you doing? But you're right. You can throw also, in from far off. There it is. If you're watching the video, there's the sign right there. Indoor sports. There it was. <laughs> so, yeah. So, uh, another thing about this game <clears throat> is you can't pick who you play. You always play the center. The center. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who wants to play the center in basketball? Well, he's in the middle of the action, Brand. That's why he's there. Oh, my gosh. So you always play the center, which means shooting outside, no chance. You got no chance. And, you well, you can't slam the ball either, so. You know, did you look through the, the teams that were available? It yes. had all the teams you would expect, but then it, one that caught my eye, because I was like, what? It has to be a Mobile, Mo- Mobile. Alabama. Mobile, yes. <laughs> yes. I was like, how did Mobile get played. a team? <laughs> I'm assuming someone lived in Alabama. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we got to put Mobile in there. <laughs> Just this is one crazy game, I got to say. So you, what you're saying is you uh, weren't a, a fan. Few positives, a, a few more positives. Uh, there are a lot of slam dunk animations. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know, they'll do 360s. All the the graphics are passable, even though they're they're be- way way below what an Amiga 500 was capable of doing. Uh, the animations, they're not smooth, but they're not jerky either. Uh, because of how you sl- slowly build up speed, it looks odd, but it's okay. Uh, there are tons and tons and tons of you miss the shot animation. Sometimes it will uh, go around the rim. Yeah. Sometimes it'll bounce off short. It'll bounce off far. Uh, it's not dynamic. It's all you know scripted. Once you shoot, it plays whatever animation it chooses to play. Uh, but there's there's several of them. <clears throat> um, yeah, that's it. That's all the positive. You know, the game was an, an absolute nightmare. Oh, 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 oh! The other thing I wanted to mention: the computer loves to call timeout. Right after yes. halftime begins, yes, I'm glad before they throw the ball in, like you've been setting, even if you don't watch the cheerleaders, between first half and second half, you've got about 45 seconds of just sitting there waiting for things to start back up. And you get back on the court, the action starts, the whistle blows, the referee scrolls up, and your opponent has called yeah. timeout. <laughs> Okay, I'm glad you had that happen to you because I thought to myself, who would call timeout exactly after halftime? That happened to me two times. Oh, it happened. I I obviously, unfortunately, played this a lot more than you. <laughs> I played through an entire series. Oh, <laughs> well, this was yeah, rough. Yeah, did you did you see any reviews on this thing? Oh, uh, oh. Yeah, tons of reviews for the NES game. No, that doesn't count. Hey, I want to mention... I I, uh, uh, but, I tried looking up some magazine reviews. Uh, I, I cannot recall the magazines at this time, uh, but they gave it a 46%, uh, which I think is incredibly generous. I mean, this is a game, but, oh boy. I, I If you want a low-scoring slow-paced basketball game, which, of course, you know, that's what basketball is known for. <laughs> it's low scores and slow pacing. <clears throat> this game is for you. Otherwise, no. Nah. 
You know, I want to. This is. I want to mention that our, our good buddy in chat, Z9 K9, looked this up and, and has found a floppy release of this game called uh, Omni Play Basketball. So that's great for people that want to try that out. <laughs> Feel free, please. I'd be interested to see what the differences are between this and that. Horrible games, Brent. So as we as we run screaming from the CDTV. Uh, what what are you what are your final thoughts on this uh, magnificent unit? I know at some point in the future, I'm going to predict about oh, maybe around episode 188. This is going to come up as a retro rewind piece, and it's going to land, and and I'm going to quit the show. <laughs> so hey, I got something to look forward to at least. <laughs> That that is my prediction of, for uh, that's my prediction for the Finally, day. Finally, my dreams of a solo venture will come true. But until <laughs> then, I dream of something else, Brent. You know what it is? Oh. It's the wheel. Here we go. Yes. Yes. It's this is the new happy happy Brent theme for the wheel. Here it is. What 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 game is this from, Brent? This is Railway from the. the uh, Mega Duck slash Cougar Boy. By far the absolute best handheld gaming music I've ever heard. Are, I are love you telling it. me that the 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 uh, Mega Duck slash Cougar Boy has outpaced the CD TV? Oh, <laughs> yeah. In fact, the music that you're hearing right now is leaps and bounds better than anything we experienced during our. Yeah, it's not random for starters. So this week we've added to the wheel, Brent. The ZX, or ZX, if you will, 8-1. The ZX-81 has been added to the wheel. Our retro rewind piece, 1980s pinball. We haven't had a pinball for a while. So I'm going to spin this sucker. We'll see how we do. All right. Here we go. Let's see what we get here. And it is, whoa, right out of the gate. The ZX81 has come up. Right, first roll. Wow. Brent, what is your opinion of the ZX81? Listen, man, when you're at the very bottom, you can only go up. <laughs> so I am looking forward to this. Yes, this is, uh, and I have not researched this, but as far as I know, this is the precursor to what would be the ZX Spectrum. So this is a sub-spectrum uh, level. Now, there was a ZX80, which I, I believe was a uh, uh, bizarre kind of white, cream-white-looking thing, but I did look at a picture of the ZX81. It's a it's a sexy little unit, if I may say. Good-looking little black unit. So should be fun. Hopefully there's some decent games uh, on this bad boy. Uh, Brent, any, uh, any parting thoughts, information you want to share with the fine folks? I, I have ventured into hell and and came back clean. So uh, I'm ready for some good gaming this yeah, week. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, I want to uh, mention that uh, coming up uh, towards the end of November, we do have the the yearly event, the Thanks for Giving Marathon. Uh, Britt, tell the people what that's all about. Uh, come and watch us play games of your uh, on systems of your choosing uh, or themes of your choosing uh it's a way to say thanks to everyone who uh donates to the show and donates to the charity and uh just supports us overall it's just uh gonna be eight hours of continuous fun time game time everybody, everybody comes this out this will be november 27th the day after thanksgiving uh i think we usually start that about uh around uh, was it 9 p 9 a.m eastern standard time brand is the way we usually do that uh, it should be. I believe should so. be a good time. Are we still taking wheel uh, suggestions, Brad? We're still in on that. Yeah, we've got anyone who wants to do a wheel suggestion, uh, email, Discord, uh, you know, anything. Carrier Let pigeon. us know. Message it a we, bottle. We need to get those. Uh, literally, this has to be one of the last weeks we can do it, so we can prep. Yeah. If you uh, hear in the chat right now, have suggestions for wheel pieces you'd like to see. Sh just shout them out. We'll have a look at them because we're looking for suggestions. These will be played. So for something you've never seen us play, this is the time. The time is now. Uh, Brent, anything else we need to discuss? Uh, are we good to go? No, I think we're good to you wrap up. You want to say hi ho to everyone in the chat? 
Oh, man, we had so many people today. Uh, I'm not even going to try. <laughs> I'm going to grab some lurkers because those are the uh, backbone of the community. Uh, we got Tallman, Tallmanza. Uh, sh- uh, sure well, I you really that. started with a good one there. Andy from Ohio. Hello. Thanks for watching. And let me grab one more lurker here. Uh, Hamo1. I remember doing hammy raids back in COA. Oh, yeah. Those, those are good days. Those are good days. Hey, thanks, everyone, for enduring this edition of ARG Presents. We will try to pick better games the next time on the ZX81. So until next week, run. Thanks for joining us today. We really hope you enjoyed the show. Quick shout out to all of our YouTube subscribers and Twitch followers. A special thank you to Duncan Styles for our vector graphics and Bartbit for our amazing music. Would you like to keep ARG spinning for as little as a dollar a month? You can do so at anchor.fm slash ARG presents. Supporters get entry into the Amigos Discord channel as well as their name called out in the credits. Supporters like these fine folks. Anthony Jarvis, Graham W. Vetke, Terry Howard, Gary Heather, John Schaller, The Slow Norris, Bernhard Lucas, Frodo NL, Steve Rasmussen, Chris Fools, Mitsuyama, Retro Algae, Hermsky, John Dackman, and Jerry Dennington. Don't want to explain another credit card bill? That's okay too. You can help us out by leaving us a positive review on Spotify and Apple iTunes. Have an idea for a wheel piece? Send it to us at argpresents at mail.com. We record live every Sunday at 9 a.m. EDT on Twitch. Hope to see you there.